Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are going to do something that I haven't actually done before. We're going to play with the KOS mod and we're going to try to make a missile. Uh, so I've started off here creating just a makeshift missile. It basically launches first with four of these little SRBs. And what this is going to do is shoot us up just fast enough so that our air breathing engines here with those Reaper engines can kick in and uh, get this thing moving in a much more efficient way. So there aren't a great deal of aerodynamic surfaces on this. We don't want a lot of drag. This is a missile after all. The idea is that it can move quite quickly. So we'll save and launch this. Uh, we'll head out here to the launch pad here. Um, and uh, yeah, what we want to try to do first of all is just give it a fly. Make sure that it's uh, fairly stable. We just want to manually take this thing for a run. So launching here, uh, heading up here now with the SRBs only. Uh, we'll just time accelerate this a little so you can see how this is going here above 140 meters per second. And those SRBs almost about to run out now just as we hit around 200 meters per second. So decoupling and uh, we'll kick in the rapier engines here. Now these are going to run only on air breathing mode. Of course, we have only got this entire missile loaded with liquid fuel. So pitching down here now. Um, and you can see there it's, it's responding okay. It doesn't seem to uh, have its center of lift in an odd way. It's kind of happy. We can steer it quite quickly. So no dramas at all. Although it doesn't have a lot of uh, lift surfaces. We can get quite a bit done here with this, so uh, yep, we'll just give it a bit of a turn, coming around, there we go, and we'll see if we can, uh, well, let's just go and smash into something more useful, shall we? Well, there goes our SRBs exploding onto the ground there, uh, so we'll just do a bit of a nosedive, pick up some speed. And we'll head back towards the vehicle assembly building, which in my eyes is the easiest target to blow up. Down we come. 260 meters per second here now. Pitching down a little. Come on, come on, come on. I'm manually controlling this, obviously. And bang! There, there we go. Down goes the vehicle assembly building. That's exactly... Uh, the kind of effect that I wanted. So yeah, the uh, the demo of that little missile worked quite well uh, But what we want to do is we want to actually make this missile an automatically guided missile I don't want to touch this thing. I want to set it and forget it Let it go and do the damage on its own so we can actually attach one of these scriptable control uh, Systems here. We'll grab this one just because it's easier to, um, to select in uh, In flight mode pop all that back on and there we go there, so that is all we need. That is part of the KOS mod. So what I'll do is add this craft in the description just without that little KOS part on it. That means that you can use the craft with or without the KOS mod. If you want to do what I'm doing here, just pop this little part on and away you go. So what we'll do is open the terminal here. You just do that by right clicking there and we'll just type a very simple command first here. So just edit and then in quotes missile with a period at the end. This will create a brand new file which we can then type commands into. So just consider this to be sort of like a text file or a programming file. Now I've just um, pasted in here just some print commands. So it's going to print countdown, print three, wait for one second, print two, wait for one second, print one, wait for one second, and then stage. So it's going to count down three, two, one, and then stage the first stage. So uh, we'll save this and exit. And then to run the file, we just go run, and then the name of the file, missile, period, and press enter. Uh, now what that will then do, uh, we'll just bring this down a little before I run it. And there we go. So countdown three, two, one, and it will stage. So I didn't touch the stage key myself there, and the program has now ended. That's basically all this program does. So yes, that's obviously fairly useless. All that we've done there is printed out three, two, one, and uh, that was the end of the program after it staged the first stage. So after this stage runs out now, what's going to happen is basically nothing. If we don't touch anything ourselves. Nothing else, go, nothing else is going to happen. It's just going to fall straight down to the ground and uh, yes, obviously uh, probably kill our uh, launch pad because we've just gone straight up. So we'll revert the, this to our launch and we'll do a little more now with our program. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, take this one step further. We're going to do a copy path command here to copy from uh, zero colon slash missile 
and this is a file I've prepared earlier which actually sits uh, technically in the vehicle assembly building. This is a file external to our saved game. This is under the ships slash scripts directory uh, and you can access any of the files or copy them across from outside the game. So we can edit this with notepad or your preferred choice of editor. Now this script is a very short one. First we see that we're setting a variable for countdown seconds to three. Uh, this defines how we actually do our countdown. We then clear the screen on the output window and we then do a quick loop to count down, waiting for one second there that you can see on line 11, waits for one second, and then we run the stage command followed by print the message launch. So this is basically the same thing that we just had inside that window, but uh, yes, now we obviously have it in an external file called missile.ks and we can simply copy this across. So here we go, uh, we've copied that. We can now list files and we'll see a copy of this file is sitting here on our local missile. So very handy. We can now run the copy of the file, run missile, and we should see the same thing. Countdown, three, two, one, and launch. And of course, the program has now ended. So yep, this is uh, fantastic. We can now edit away with our preferred external text editor. Notepad++ I think is quite good. I would recommend that one. Okay, so let's have some more fun now. We will uh, get this ready to copy our file again, and we're going to add some more uh, commands to our rocket. After doing that first stage, we are going to clear screen. We're going to then do a lock steering to up command. This is basically going to make sure that our rocket continues to point straight up on the nav ball. We're then going to uh, uh, head down here to uh, line 21. Basically, this loop here is a command that will look for your max thrust. As soon as it detects that there is no thrust, then it will stage again. And uh, also print the word staging, which is handy so that you know what's going on. Now, that preserve command will basically keep that loop running at all times, which is quite handy. So uh, while the program is running, that, uh, that loop will also run. So it will continue to stage until it actually starts getting some thrust back again. Underneath this, down where we've got line 28, this is basically just a loop that will allow the program to wait until our altitude of our vessel passes 2,000 meters. As soon as it does pass 2,000 meters, this loop is essentially then going to break and continue on. And under this, we just have a couple of dummy uh, dummy lines here just to keep the script running so that we can uh, yeah, keep making sure that the actual thrust uh, command above is going to uh, actually stage that second stage. Okay, so let's try this. Again, we'll copy the path, run the file, we get the countdown, we get a stage, and for some reason I'm echoing out launch there twice. It's okay, I'll fix that here in a moment. Uh, so what we see now is that our vessel is pointing exactly up there on the nav ball. You'll see it's making automatic small corrections there just to keep ourselves pointed uh, exactly vertical, so that's uh, that's doing a great job there. I am not touching anything. It now staged and it executed our second stage. It's fired that engine. That is fantastic. So it has done all that exactly as we needed. Of course, we're not going to get any real thrust when we're going straight up with these rapier engines. What we'll need to be doing is heading down here to the island. We want to set up a target to blow up down here at the old airfield. So uh, after playing around a little with trying to figure out what the latitude longitude coordinates of the airfield are, uh, I managed to find them. So now what we want to be able to do is make our missile after it uh, decouples there from stage two and fires those rapier engines, we want it to head over to the airfield. So we'll open our script again and do some more modifications to this. So you'll see now here under uh, line 31 there, we are setting a target latitude longitude which has those exact numbers in there. Those are the numbers uh, for the airfield, the actual runway itself. So what we're basically saying here on line 34 is that until we are less than 7,000 meters from our target, continue this loop, which is basically to lock the steering to point to our target latitude, longitude, and continuously print out the distance from the target in meters, uh, basically every 0.1 of a second. So yes, let's give this a go now. So again, we will open up this terminal here. We are going to run that same copy path command. Three, two, one, and launching now. We're only showing launch once this time. So again, we should see ourselves uh, without touching any keys at all, pointing straight up. 
surface speed above 100 meters per second now as soon as those solid rocket boosters run out of juice the script will automatically detect the the uh, the drop in thrust and there we go there it will also engage our next stage and point to that latitude longitude automatically i haven't touched a thing here and it's now going to slowly increase its velocity until we get over to uh basically to the to the target latitude longitude as soon as we actually get to within 7000 meters of that target then it's going to end the program and then we're basically going to be free to take over control of the missile and do what we want with it so uh, obviously there will be more steps to this what we can do though you can even see here we can play around with camera tools um, and you know do some flybys and that sort of thing again not touching anything you can see it is staying it you know, perfectly aligned with that latitude longitude mark that we've put into the code and we just don't even have to touch it at all so the current distance from the target you see is being updated constantly there in our little uh, output window down under 22 kilometers now and you can see we're slowly picking up speed the reason we don't really need any more thrust than this is simply because as we pick up speed our rapier engines get more and more powerful uh, so they are just awesome in that way so if we actually had this thing going full thrust we would pretty much be burning this thing up right now which would make it a pretty counterproductive missile so our surface speed here is almost at 400 meters per second so we are now moving at quite a clip uh, the distance from our target now reading uh, we're down under 11,000 meters so remember as soon as we get past 7,000 meters our program will end and we will take manual control and there we go there the program has ended you will see now the missile will just start drifting upwards the old airfield our target is down here the next step in our script is basically going to be to nosedive at the old airfield target and uh, yes see if we can get it to impact with an enemy that is waiting for us down there uh, basically has been taunting me for quite some time so uh, taking manual control will actually nosedive this thing we'll see how maneuverable it is at a high speed I'll just cut the uh, thrust there just so that I don't smash into the ocean come on turn 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 all right we'll thrust back up there it's it's fairly maneuverable still we uh, yep there we go we can spin it yep it's it's pretty good it's pretty stable plenty of fuel left this thing could literally travel for a very long time so we are all good there it's quite maneuverable we'll uh, just crash it down here uh, and head back we'll do a quick reload and away we go again We'll bring up our uh, our terminal and uh, edit the program again. So what we now want to do uh, is basically run the program that will pop up here. We'll actually let this run in the background just because it's going to take a while to get over there. You can see we've added a little more down underneath line 38. We have a clear screen command and then we have a basic command here, a basic loop that basically says after the above conditions are met we are basically going to uh, lock the steering to the target latitude longitude with an altitude of only 100 meters and then we're going to print the message destroy and basically what this is going to do is force our missile to nosedive straight at the target at the airfield uh, with a message destroy so as soon as we pass 7000 meters there we go, our missile has now received the destroy command. It is going to nose dive straight at an aircraft that is sitting on the airfield. Down we come here. Come on, come on. 500 meters per second and it's, oh, <laughs> it's right on target. Look at that. There is absolutely nothing left of that aircraft now. I think I actually had Bill sitting in the pilot seat there. Uh, poor Bill, I do feel sorry for you. So as I said, this vessel will be available in the description. But uh, what we could also do here is mix BD Armory with this missile. We can add this weapons manager and uh, yeah, a couple of extra little daring sort of winglets there. And we can also put on a bunch of uh, hydropods just to actually make this a little more effective. And uh, yes, a uh, explosive warhead there on the top. So we could launch this thing and uh, have a bit of a play with some weaponry at the end of our missile. So uh, using the exact same script, we can launch this thing again. 
sand this up. We've got this uh, footage here sped up now. So over we go. We'll just quickly transition to where we do our nosedive. We can then arm our BD weapons manager. And uh, yes, as we get close to our target, we will just unleash all of these Hydra missiles. Uh, we'll just do this manually. I don't know if you can actually execute the Hydra missiles with a KOS, but we can see them firing them off here. Come on. Keep going. We'll uh, see if we can take it out before we get to it. Oh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't think we quite got it in time. Uh, but anyway, there is still nothing left. So yes, look, enjoy having a good play with this. You can just do some brilliant things with this KOS mod. And uh, if you're in school, high school, university, uh, and you're learning some programming, this is a great thing to do because it is really fun to see what your programs can do. And uh, it's quite a good little language, this KOS language. And uh, yes, using something like Notepad++, uh, you can do it all externally, especially if you've got two monitors, you can keep executing it, reverting your save, executing it again, uh, no problem at all. So before we go today, I have a number of flags to drop. Apologies to everybody because I haven't actually dropped these for a while. We have four to drop today, planting a flag here for our first of the four. Uh, now, just for everybody who doesn't actually understand this process, if they haven't watched my channel much before, I basically drop a flag if somebody answers a thumbnail hidden message question. Either that or I might sometimes do a random comment draw to win a flag as well. So dropping the second one here. If you are lucky enough to be selected in a random comment draw, and we will do that again for this video, uh, I'll basically just uh, reply to one of your comments and uh, ask you to send me a flag. So uh, dropping the third flag here now. So if you would like to have a flag at the Minmus base here, uh, simply answer one of the hidden thumbnail question messages. Uh, you can do this by basically downloading a full copy of the thumbnail. And inside that thumbnail, there will be a hidden scrambled message which you need to decrypt and basically answer and message me. It's best to tweet me if you can because then I'm sure to get the message where sometimes the YouTube comments can be a little bit funny. So uh, congratulations there to the four flag winners. Uh, we'll continue this process, of course, for the rest of you. And uh, yes, I would like to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second and give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. All of your support helps a huge amount. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them down in the comments below. Thank you very much to all of you that have subscribed. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Uh, if you want to check out last week's episode, it is in the bottom left here where we did the International Space Station. The top right video is a video that is a recent one and the bottom right one that YouTube has chosen just for you. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.